Hello, hey. Dr. Sumrall. Thank you for joining us on MD Newsline. You've been here before, but can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Thank you, Esther. Uh, so I'm Ashley Sumrall. I am a neuro-oncologist and I'm the section chief of neuro-oncology uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina for Atrium Health Levine Cancer. And you did a great oral presentation today on some research that you've been conducting. I would love to hear about that. Thank you. Um, one of the areas of interest that I'm very passionate about is um, brain tumors that are especially difficult to treat. They're all difficult, uh, but there is a small group of patients who have what we call diffuse midline gliomas, and they have a specific mutation affecting what we call H3K27, which is a mouthful. Um, these tumors affect children and young adults and also affect some adults up into their 40s. And what I presented was an updated analysis of data for a drug called Dordabaprone or ONC201 in the adult setting and the pediatric setting. And essentially, we demonstrated that there are response rates that we can see and also that the treatment is well tolerated. So one of the things that we found is the overall response rate is about 20% when you look at both groups combined together. And that is just one goalpost. Um, something else to consider is that maintaining or improving quality of life is very important. And then hopefully we will see additional um, prolongation and survival for these patients. We don't often hear about adult and pediatrics in the same clinical study, um, but with such a rare disease, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. What were your thoughts around designing the study in that way? So these were actually two studies, but we put the data together. And, you know, something that's surprising to a lot of people, some of our pediatric studies go up to age 30 or into the mid 20s. So our definition of pediatrics is evolving. Um, but in this data, we took our adult group and our pediatric group and presented them together. Again, because this is such a rare disease. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is a study looking at the same type of tumor, but in the newly diagnosed setting. Um, so I I've been involved in that work as well. It's very rewarding because these patients have no systemic therapy options. Uh, the only treatments that we have uh, to offer them have been surgery, which is very difficult in the deep part of the brain, and then radiation therapy. Mm. How do you interpret the objective response rates and duration of response in the context of maybe like historical outcomes mm -hmm. for the disease? Mm -hmm. Is really challenging. Um, this particular subtype of tumor was only defined in 2021 in the WHO classification. So the history of this illness is very messy. Um, you have DIPG, which is one type of deep brain tumor, and then these tumors. And so in some of the studies, those were put together. Uh, in, in both of these settings, we excluded the DIPG tumor. Um, so you really have to spend a lot of time analyzing the MRIs, and that includes both contrasted and non-contrasted images. And so I may spend an hour examining an MRI and pulling up multiple versions of it and carefully measuring uh, because it can be really tricky. Hmm. 